Basque Country is an area on the border of Spain and France. In fact, three provinces are in Spain and three are in France. You might be wondering why the hell I'm going on about this. However, alongside the tradition of artists, musicians and models, this area of the world, which has got its own language, in fact, and sits on one of the choppiest area seas in the world, the Bay of Biscay, being on it, is becoming famous for something else. Football managers and football head coaches. One of the areas of the Basque Country is an area called Gipscoa, and it is one of the smallest provinces of Spain, and its capital city is San Sebastian. Now, we're going to go back a little bit, but there's a reason why I do mention that at this point. Let's go back to a certain club in the area, Athletic Bilbao. Athletic Bilbao are one of the biggest clubs in the Basque Country. There is another one, Real Sociedad, who are very, very big as well. But Athletic Bilbao in particular has a policy of signing Basque-only players, both for its identity and its economy. It's part of Spain, which is completely unique. However, it's not always been like this. And the reason why, you have to go back a long, long time to actually find it. In the 1911 Copa del Rey, I did say it was going to be a long, long time, um, Athletic Bilbao were actually accused of fielding illegible players. Now, upset by these charges, Athletic Bilbao started its own policy of fielding Basque-only players and flying the flag for the Basque region. Bilbao's academy produces around 85% of its players, which is quite unique in world football. And they are only one of three clubs in Spanish football not to be relegated from La Liga. The other two, of course, are Real Madrid and Barcelona. The club actually recruits from Los Rajablancos uh, brother clubs in the area. It's a bit of a mouthful, that. Um, surrounding the Bay of Biscay. And the sort of players, when they arrive at Bilbao, begin their journey at a later age than in other areas of Spain. Now, from these brothers' clubs, what they actually do is they learn really the fundamentals. And then they get to Bilbao and they learn those fundamentals more. The club actually looks for the values and the views of those players, as well as the technical ability. Now, the reason for that is to create good people as well as good players. There's a model of discipline here, and that is something that will come up quite a few times during this video. So what they do is they actually give youngsters responsibilities from the very off. Now, other clubs, like I said, have had similar rules in the past, and one of those clubs is Real Sociedad. But they relaxed this in 1989, so they could sign John Aldridge from Liverpool. Bilbao, though, have remained unique in only bringing in Basque players. So therefore, they won't sign anybody outside of this region. However, there is exceptions to this. Players, for example, who have been born elsewhere, but have grown up in the Basque region, are eligible. Therefore, one player that is eligible for joining Athletic Bilbao was Anton Griezmann. Now, the thing is, is the reason why this never really happened was Anton Griezmann was outside of Athletic Bilbao's cost range, but it was not something that they were against. Now, of course, you're probably still thinking, why the hell are we going through all of this? Well, let's go back to that area and that small province in Spain called Gipuzkoa. Now, there is certain managers that have come from that region. Mike Mikel Arteta come from that region. Zabi Alonso, Wolves manager, Julian Lopetegui, the man that turned Aston Villa around. Unai Emre, and a certain Andoni Areola. 
that's where this all comes in. So, because how small the Basque country is, all five managers grew up local to each other. And as it was already mentioned in an AFC Bournemouth interview, at the very, very one of the very, very first ones, I believe it was Mark McAdam that asked the question, Iriola does know Mikel Arteta. I wouldn't be surprised if he knows Lopetegui. He definitely will know Alonso. More reasons on that a little bit later. Maybe even Unai Emre. So there is a real close knit. But how the hell are these players becoming so, so good? We'll go on to Iriola's career in a moment. But there is a piece that I did want to actually bring up as well. Now, there has been two managers in particular from the Basque country, which aren't being mentioned at this moment in time, who have done very, very well. And one man is quite responsible for that. Now, a Spanish news outlet called Relovo asked a gentleman called Mikel Ixteria, you know, why the Basque country is developing such high level, good quality coaches. And this is what he said. I always say the same thing. You have to be careful not to disparage other areas or provinces when you want to praise Gipscoa or the Basque country, Xtari explained. But I do usually explain that the Basque country has got a way of structuring itself on the basis of teamwork led by a manager. There are similarities with a football team. In the Basque country, we have many sports directly related to work, such as lifting and dragging stones. And the effort has always been related to sport. Now, the two managers that were also mentioned was a Jacoba Arasante, who was at Osasana and had a fantastic season with them. Another manager that was mentioned was Imanol Alguicil. Um, he is at Real Sociedad and has also had a very, very good season. Now, when asked about Alguicil, um, Exteria did mention, I didn't expect him to be a coach. He was very introverted, although he was very methodical and hardworking, a bit like he is still now. But I didn't see him in the dugout at all. We met again on the way to Madrid for the UEFA Pro license. And he still had the same humility as he did when he was a player. And he still has it today, despite everything he's achieved at La Real, which is very commendable. The only one I could imagine on the bench was Unai Emre not only because of his communication skills, but also because he has such a strong personality. Although he didn't win the title in Gipscoa, he always had a rebellious streak. Now, the thing is, is we do mention this. And of course, these people have all worked with some of the best coaches in football. And Eriola, Look at what he did at Rayo Vallecano, taking a side who, let's be honest, was probably akin to AFC Bournemouth under Maxim Denham. And that's no, that's no, not to knock Maxim's reign at all. What I'm saying now is that Bill Foley has got the money to actually pump into the football club and take this football club on the next level. But this man, Exaria, has worked with the likes of Iriola, Unai Emre, Mikel Arteta, Zabi Alonso, Lopetegui in the past, um, and has got a proven track record of doing that. Iriola was known as one of the most promising players growing up. And of course, it was no surprise that he actually joined one of the brother clubs. Now, do remember this name because it will come up again, a club called Antigueca. Now, Antigoka are based in San Sebastian. And then eventually, Iriola joined Athletic Bilbao. Now, there's another club that he went to in the year 2000, and he joined them only for a season. Now, that club is Basconia. Now, remember what I said about players who, you know, not necessarily, you know, come from 
the Basque region. They might have played in, you know, was born in Romania or Africa or elsewhere. Well, Basconia don't have the same rules as Athletic Bilbao. And this is what's quite interesting about Basconia is a lot of these players played for Basconia. So the players who actually played for Athletic Bilbao but were not born in the Basque country actually go through Basconia themselves. So that, you know, and means that they are eligible to join Athletic Bilbao. Now, I do digress, but Iriola had a great season in Basconia and ended up going back to Bilbao to play in their second strings team. Now, this is a little bit different to English football because second string teams are actually able to play in lower divisions. They're not able to get promoted to La Liga if they win the La Liga, uh, that division, but they are able to compete. And Iriola did very, very well for the second string team. And it was no surprise. In 2003, he made his debut for the first team at Athletic Bilbao and was there pretty much thereafter. He did have a short spell at New York City towards the end of his career. But this is what is different about Basque players. They tend to stay with that club for the duration of their career. And that's pretty much what Iriola did. Now, we did mention, of course, Zabi Alonso. And Zabi Alonso actually started his career at Antigurka as well. And he was at the same youth club at the time that Iriola was. Arteta was picked up by Barcelona. And of course, Lopetegui was a little bit older as well. So his career started a bit beforehand, but therefore, you know, it shows that there is that path. There is that path. Um, also, Iriola and Alonso actually played for the Basque Country national team together at the same time. And whereas Lopetegui actually played more times for the Basque team than he did the Spanish side, um, the Basque Country national team has had some quality players throughout the years, including the players that I've just mentioned. Now, they are able to play against FIFA-recognised teams in friendlies. However, they're not able to qualify for the European Championships or World Cups, for example. But what really does make this area of the country, of the world, so talented and awash with such great managers. Well, like Ixaria did mention, it is the discipline, it is the drive, it is the coaching and it is the togetherness of the Basque country. The Basque country do produce play managers that are a little bit of a different style to the rest of Spain and the rest of the world, in fact. You look at how Iriola plays and you look at how Arteta plays, they're very high pressing managers. Lopetegui, the same. They're taught from an early age to press high. They're very tactical as well. And that's what Exteria actually gives them. Is he runs a lot of workshops with up and coming managers as well as the managers that we've mentioned about how they should approach games, the tactical knowledge. They don't go all out attack. They don't you know, forget about defence. The defensive side comes into it. But it's a pressing from the front that Basque country managers seem to do um, and keeping that side on the back foot. We've already seen, and I know he hasn't played a game yet or managed the game for AFC Bournemouth, but we've already seen in training the intensity of those training sessions go right up through the roof. So therefore, that shows exactly what Iriola expects from his side. Look at what Iriola did at Rayo Vallecano, for example, and how he had them set up, attacking from the front, you know, keeping the pressure on. Um, Vallecano aren't a Spanish powerhouse. Like I say, they're probably a similar size, you know, to AFC Bournemouth but probably without the resources and the money 
that Iriola is going to enjoy here. But the Basque setup does offer something completely different to the rest of Spanish football. It offers something completely different to the rest of football in general. They have this sense of unity and they have this sense of togetherness that is helps them propel themselves forwards. They've had some great coaches throughout the years, not just the managers that are in the current day. And who would say that Al Giusil and Arasante, uh, Real Sociedad and uh, Asana, will you know be any different? Um, so this is exactly what I mean. Um, who will be the next star in the making? Have we already named them? Um, and what will our new head coach bring to the table? He's already made it clear. He doesn't want to be responsible for signing the players. He wants the responsibility of finding the players that he will needs to the club. And that's quite interesting. And that is quite exciting. And, of course, it gives Richard Hughes a lot of work to do. But thinking back to some of the signings that we made during the January window, were those signings made with Iriola in mind? You've got to think so now. But Iriola, as well as Arteta, Lopetegui, Emery and Alonso, offer so much. And it'll be exciting to see how they all do. But I'm sure, you know, based on what we've seen so far, Iriola is going to be a sensation at AFC Bournemouth. And it'd be exciting to see what he does this season.